Thank you. Welcome back. This is Newsfile, is your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. Um, before we proceed to the next aspect of disbanding the uh, party militia, let me state here that I do not have any suits in front of me, and I have not seen one. We have not discussed any suit here. So for those of you who are interested in projecting that anybody is discussing a suit, nobody has discussed a suit. If I have made any reference, it is a reference from the petition to the NMC, which I have said is essentially a rehash of the reaction by the government, which we have. So thank you very much. Um, no need for any reactions. Thank you. All right, so um, now, Doc. Yes. The, po the, the, the argument many are making is that we are reducing the president's commitment to disbanding party militia to exchange of letters. And the president, some also are beginning to fault him, that he says he wants the parties to meet and do this thing. But even before they do that, he has proceeded to the next pledge, that if the, that did not yield any good, he would proceed with a legislation. He has given instructions to the Attorney General to produce a draft. But it must be stated that he says that what the AG is doing is without any prejudice to whatever outcome there may be from what the parties will do or even the ML Short Commission's report. What do you say? Um, I think the two actions do not are mutually uh, reinforcing of a commitment uh, because even after doing the uh, dialogue whatever agreement they come to would find its way into law endorsed by law to make it enforceable mm -hmm. okay but i also think that uh, the president letter well when when i heard of it or i saw it initially i said but the dialogue hasn't taken place dialogues will get very protracted mm. the president has seen a menace a threat mm. As president and head of state, he is responsible for the security of everybody. He must have more information than we have. Uh, I'm, I believe the intelligence uh, institutions are working. They are bringing data. And you might recall that recently, this thing, blacklist, uh, of blacklisting of Ghana, be, Ghana being put on the list, mm. you know, uh, had to do with the, very, the institution saying that Ghana is not doing enough. Okay, it's framework for fighting uh, terrorism, financing, and money laundering, and so on. It's weak. And they were very concerned. I suspect, and I don't know the reasons, because I thought maybe Mr. Ahin or uh, uh, Honorable Minister of Information would explain why this is coming. But it's, 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 it's the discretion of the president. However, I think if you look at it in terms of the executive and its responsibilities to strengthen the legal framework, to make these offenses punishable, uh, there might be a point there, okay? And the, the reason why I said they are mutually reinforcing is that uh, he put both on the table. The question is, if the dialogue is not taking place and there are, for instance, financing of militias that is coming from outside, for example, you know, are the existing laws effective enough to deal with them, first of all? Or there are loopholes. What is the legal advice he had for him to say, let's start work, and so on and so forth? So uh, maybe the way he packaged it made a C sequence, like you finish the political before you go to it. And I have a feeling that the president, when he said he had asked his uh, the NPP to engage, he thought the MPP, uh, MPP was going to move very quickly. Mm. Just last Wednesday, the, the NDC said, we've not received a single letter from them. There's not been any formal communication. Mm. And you also have the unfortunate situation where, because MPP hasn't communicated and taken charge, of this process, you had letters being exchanged between the party, mm -hmm. opposition party, and the president. Mm -hmm. And you know, it created a problem because the president, mm -hmm. the way he handled it, uh, positioned himself above the party fray. Yeah. Okay, but now he wasn't, he's being made to respond to letters mm -hmm. as if he's representing mm -hmm. MPP and is going to get into a situation where some. Uh, decisions or agreements will be rejected simply by saying, you know, the president was biased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you see? Mm -hmm. so, so I think in this complex relationship, what it means is that 
you cannot say he's biased when he goes on the legislation route. After all, the two parties are in parliament, and they are going to deal with it. But I think what it reinforces is that there is the need to introduce mechanisms very quickly that will show the president or take him out of the political discourse mm. that must take place. He still has a role to play, but he has to be above the parties. In this case, he's not acting as candidate or whatever. He's acting as president and head of state. So what are the mechanisms that will give him that autonomy? There are times in a nation's history, we've seen it in French history and so on, where even if you are a hostage or a candidate of various groups who have <coughs> control over the state, when you see danger that the state is in some serious crisis and could decline and, mm -hmm. you know, survival is an issue, you find out that a president would assert mm -hmm. the powers inherent. He mm -hmm. would assert his independence mm -hmm. to fix a problem. Mm -hmm. Where are the mechanisms? I think we haven't seen the mechanisms. His communication that the party now left everything to the party and the party couldn't act. If the president alternatively, because his president is... Is it the party couldn't act or someone is seeking to rush the party? Um, even though people say he gave them, he said, I'm expecting within a week or this very week that Freddie Blay will write to the NDC and that that has not happened up to this point, that Freddie Blay has only done a phone call of sorts to the NDC. Was it like a fiat that you must do it within one week? Why are we suggesting that the NPP has not taken the steps to, to have this conversation going? I think it's more than a week now. It's three weeks. Yeah, it's, been 20, it's been 21 days. So, you see, so you see, today is 22 days, I think. Yes, but, but I think that is, that's the lesson we learn. The matter of uh, these uh, uh, violent vigilantes and what they've done, it's not a party, just a party. It's the state matter. Mm -hmm. It violates the law. So must it touches leave, on... Leave you it see, the party. So, so the question is... That's the question. Yes, the, so the approach that it should be left with the party, the, for the parties to sort out, in terms of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen the lesson that it's the first time we're doing this anyway, but the state should have had an organ, a mechanism, a structure You're of a assuming sort. it's not there. Mm. And, no, I would I, say it mm. is there. The okay. propriety. Co co sorry. Yes, sir, sorry. You see, so, so, yeah. so, so, so that's the first lesson. Mm. I think for the president, he needs to, whether he's telling the attorney general or somebody, they could have used his authority to convene the parties. The letters that should go in other jurisdictions, state business <coughs> is not settled by parties. The bureaucracy, the civil service will convene. With the authority. president did the correct identification. He said, the problem is with mm -hmm. my party and the NDC. Mm -hmm. Since you are the makers or creators of the problem, you must have the solution. Yes. Like well, Grace Ankara said, you lock the president's and uh, former the president's in one room and the party you, chairman. Do, do you know? Do you know? they come up with a solution. We yes. Don't, we do, you don't, know, uh, do you know how we them. got the pink sheets distributed? Give it, paste it, and give it that resolution that occurred before 2016, when they went to court. That was a state entity. They were locked okay. into mm. a room. Uh, what's his name? Akotampo. Exactly. Uh, and he, he, you, he, see, uh, you were there. <laughs> okay. so, you see, but you were yes. acting within the state premise with authority and power that you must do this and so on. <coughs> but the that Supreme Court sees The this. state as the executive also needs that. That's what I'm saying. Mm. That mechanism that, because he was exercising state power and state responsibility, mm. you, it was too quickly, and it was our first time. I think it went there, and we've seen that the parties cannot act. They cannot act for various reasons, historically. The mistrust is deep, <coughs> the suspicion. I think that probably these letters have not been even written because if you talk to one side, they don't even trust the other. And who are the person talking to us? Yes, you know, the are they not going to exaggerate? They, they gave so the conditions, but they were clear in their mind that already <coughs> some of these individuals have been integrated into national security. Not only as far that. As they are coming from the NPP because the Ayawa mm. Pro. I think um, you're jumping the gun. Demonstrated a bit of that. No, you're jumping the gun. With the, someone okay. who says he saw an application for advertisement for you know, national security officer, and he submitted one. He can speak English, mm. and he got to work at the VIP of the Kolkata International Airport. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman did two weeks training mm -hmm. to get that job. So, so they have they they have that point, and say already you are doing this. We don't trust that this can work well. 
and we want other parties to come in, no. even the UN and so on and so forth. You see, for a dialogue... And they said IDEC. They want IDEC to, to mm -hmm. be mediated. Um, well, for a dialogue, you need to set processes for the conversation. In fact, rules of engagement has to be agreed. Mm. Even they have to agree on the teams on both sides. Right. Uh, I don't like this person, this, this and that. There's a lot of that in what is going on. What should, happen? Trust. What should mm -hmm. happen? What should happen now is that I think maybe the two parties, I believe, are sizing themselves out. The dialogue can be, is going to be both bilateral and multilateral. But the two, because they are the powers, have to agree on how the thing is set up and the rules that will govern them and where and so on. Primary. In the process, as that starts, in fact, that's all that I think the president was expecting. And they don't need, need a mediator any, to do that? You need, in this case, that there's so much mistrust, you need a mediator. In some countries, in South Africa, for instance, they have various institutions of mediation. So it is a state entity that would convene you. And you can't say you can't go, mm. you see. But in this case, the way we handled it, because it's, it's become our culture. <laughs> Look at transition and uh, dialogues, you know, change mm. of government. Okay. We put the parties That's, in front. Mm. But in many cases, it's the civil service with authority. So we've <laughs> learned the lesson. So how do we go forward now? You know, they said um, Peace Council. Peace right. Council convenes. It has a law back mm. in it. Peace Council, I'm sure, would engage them and say, look, what can we do? We, as civil society, said not only that, what the issues are from our understanding means that you need people who could go in, they, are not, they don't have political interests or loyalties and so on. They are not going to misinterpret what you say. Part of the suspicion of individuals on both sides is that if we meet informally and we say things, they might go and distort it and change everything and it could be political against us or something. That's why they call for formal letter, so that certain structures are put in place to assure the integrity of a conversation that is going. Okay. You need technical, who could do this? After all, right. the Ghanaians who've handled yeah. international let's, let, negotiations let's see how and that goes. And so Let's see how that goes, so, 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 particularly so, in a country where the two parties have their suspicions of even these civil society organizations that some of us cherish and know that they are, you know, they can be impartial and neutral about what they do. I, I think they are moving towards that yes, anyway. Yes, and you yeah. were talking about some state entity in South Africa and so on. In Ghana, uh, apart from the Peace Council, the Peace Council is more of, you know, a reconciliator of sorts. They're supposed to be the Ghana Arbitration Center. Mm. We're that, supposed to have one by law. We have one. We don't have. What we have no, is a no, private initiative. No, it's a private initiative. It is not we one have an arbitration it's center. It's, it's, not one. it's not what the law says okay. should be. Interestingly, right. uh, the professor who runs it is right. also on the Peace Council. Right. Okay, so, so there so, is some competence. Yes, so, Beku, what do you see about, what do you say about what is going on and now the president being forced to personally be writing back to the NDC and uh, taking exception to some of their points, but commending them for their commitment. How, how will things go? How do you see it? Look, uh, initially, I was completely for the president's uh, proposition or proposal. It was targeted, focused on the two main parties mm -hmm. who are virtual, quote unquote, owners or sponsors of the problem. Of the problem. <laughs> I will choose that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, look, with goodwill, good faith, yeah. honesty, sincerity, the two parties could sit, negotiate a dissolution of these party foot soldiers who are organized under certain names and things. I was convinced it could be done. OK? You are the lawyers. I'm not. You disband something that is registered, legally registered. Mm -hmm. this, some of these groups, they are not registered. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are you going to disband mm -hmm. in terms of law? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But voluntary dissolution by the parties and their leaders, because they have publicly acknowledged the existence of these groups and some of the services these groups provided for them. So I was thinking that within that contest, since the thing has become a, an issue of major national interest, if the two parties were sincere and would do Ghana a great favor, they could sit and say, look here, these are our own bodies we formed. They are not registered, they are not licensed. We have entertained them within. Let's publicly show that we are dissolving all of them, whether they are community uh, development organizations <laughs> or they are employment, recruitment, whatever. That, I thought, 
the possibility was there. But obviously, as we've been told here, the mistrust, the distrust, and the suspicions, all those things. So now, uh, all they are going to see an unfolding political chess game. Yeah. You know, letters, counter letters, and all the rest. Mediation here and there. The president was looking at the two parties being in parliament. Mm. Apart from the fact that they have a history of sponsoring these groups, mm -hmm. even if it's not the parties as corporate entities, individuals within the parties have publicly told us that they support them and sponsor them. So that option was mm. there. Okay. But unfortunately, and don't forget the president added the point that if, in the, if you fail, then I'll go for legislation. legislation. I want to see that piece of draft legislation before I can make any serious commentary on that matter. Because I've heard Kofi and the rest talk about existing laws, existing legislations. It's true, mm. I've read some. But if I see a draft, perhaps I may see the new dimensions right. being brought to bear. Yeah. Right. And then we yeah. can interrogate the issues yeah. properly. Okay. Yeah. Look, I can recall when the Serious Fraud Office Bill was floated in the early 1990s. There was a lot of debate. And some of us were arguing that we already had existing legislation to deal with those things. Even the law on willfully causing financial loss. There were all sorts of NLC, SMC 1 and 2 enactments that were on statute mm. that could cure those mischiefs. But we decided that, look, let's find a way of consolidating, reviewing and reforming. Mm. So we have to come out with a certain legislation. <laughs> so the like the IDEC have said that the punishments are not deterrent enough and so on. So far, most of what you have is, you know, misdemeanor, meaning yeah. you won't get more than three years. Yeah. And for some of them, the specific punishment is one year. You don't get more than yes. that in jail if you are found guilty. Yeah. But what others, the question others raise is that, start with that. But, but because we, even that, you we, haven't shown me, any commitment. Yeah, yeah. We've had, we, we, there's the subculture of lack of enforcement mm. of our laws. But we've had few instances where some of these party foot soldiers were tried and right. sentenced. Mm. I'm sure you know that of some, some of the records right. here. And you saw how minimalist the sentencing was. Again, again. again. How did they no, deal with so it? So we have a history. And sometimes when you want to deal with a problem, you may have to go beyond the immediate legislation yeah. and see if you cannot do some re-engineering, legislative re-engineering, mm. to reinforce you know, to the sanctions. But you see, parties, parties. Now let's ask her. These are political parties that are also recognized by the Constitution and by other uh, legislation laws. And they have these groups that are unlicensed and unregistered. Can we begin to think about a situation where parties are disabled by law from entertaining they such don't groups? don't claim ownership of them. You are away from yeah. them. Yeah, but anybody you, you, in the you, party that claims ownership mm -hmm. can be liable. I'm, I'm not a lawyer, I'm just thinking aloud, no, that we are trying to craft legislation to cure a mischief. There's so much room for people to maneuver. As you say, they don't claim ownership. But there are people who claim ownership. And these groups are seen at party events, managing party property and things. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't claim ownership, but this group is in your constituency, yeah doing something on your behalf yeah can you be liable or not there's a for specific their misconduct? way to deal with it but again let no, me you are the lawyer I'm, I'm open to yes. brainstorming I will, I will, on this issue all, right. all i'm do saying is right. that, so, that so, says a party can be proscribed yeah. if it's associated no, with but there's another of course remedy so uh -huh. so you uh, see I, I don't think we should throw away the option of possible new legislation let's see the draft or enhanced enhanced yeah but the draft yeah. It's critical now. Now we okay. are discussing so this thing the future, in the absence, the present. So in the absence of a draft. Right. So it's yeah. difficult, really. Okay, so yeah. let's listen to this. And I, when we are done, we come to uh, Kofi Bentel and uh, Suleiman Abraham. Let's uh, listen to this. We asked the government in power and the opposition party, the lead opposition party, NDC. These two parties are the parties that are harboring or incubating, or sponsoring, or managing vigilante groups. We came out clearly in no uncertain ter terms that these two parties should disband 
via vigilantes groups or the groups that are associated with their parties. We had a healthy response from His Excellency the President during his SONA address or the State of the Nations address. He inviting the NDC for them to sit together within a week and disband it. We were so happy that something good was going to happen. The NDC also came out that they would want it to be disbanded. But for them, the president should involve other mediators, like the Peace Council and the clergy. We, the GPCC, came out to say that we are even available if we will be involved. But we've seen that it has turned out to be rhetoric, accusation and counter accusation. The president wants them to meet. The NDC says, unless you bring Peace Council or civil society, and for nearly one month, nothing has happened. We are appalled. We are discouraged. We don't see the way clear. Right, so that's uh, Reverend Professor Paul Frimpong Manson. He's the president of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic uh, Churches or Council. And that's uh, their view. And they are also, they actually also are threatening that if nothing is substantively done about this, they'll be hitting the streets to bring pressure to bear on the political class to ensure that there's actual disbandment and disarmament. Okay, yes, Kofi. Thank you, Samson. Mm. Quick analogy. The antelopes had a problem at once. They said the lions were killing them too much. So they said, we are going to have a meeting to decide what to do about these lions killing us. So this happened in your village? Yes, in my village. <laughs> And they said, yes, important, we have to do this. Everybody was unanimous about it. And then one of them said, you know what? There is nothing our meeting about this will do against the lions. Because this is their nature. And this is how they were made. And finally, we don't control the lions. We can only make decisions on ourselves and how we react. Why is this analogy important? There is nothing political parties can do to control the so-called militias, because they don't own them, they don't control them, they claim they don't have anything to do with them. They can only decide what they, political parties, can do. Somebody else has to deal with that. And I'm mm -hmm. going to go methodically, because like Kiku said, I put some issues up on Facebook, and some people had issues with it. So give me a bit of time. It won't be too long. Article 200 of our Constitution says, no person or authority shall raise any police service except by or under the authority of an act of parliament. A police service means civil order, armed or unarmed. Article 210, 2 says, no person shall <coughs> raise an armed force, armed force, except by or under the authority of an act of parliament. That's the one established in the Ghana, armed forces. OK, I move on. The National Security System <coughs> is a National Security Council and a secretariat and a national security coordinator. It has no authority to have a standing force. And its role is coordinating. But I think you're taking us within the realm of the short commission. Oh, I'm coming. This one. I, I'm just trying to build something because the sense I, I intend to actually propose a solution, not make a recommendation. And my point will be soon established. Okay, sorry. So you have state-sanctioned security arrangements. Okay, you shouldn't go beyond them. That's one. Yeah. Number two, mm -hmm. and here is the heart of the matter. When I talked about executive instrument and I said it is not a matter of the president asking political parties to meet or etc. My authority in law came from section 182A of Act 29. And I read. It says, power to prohibit certain organizations. One, whenever the president is satisfied with respect to any organization, Either A, that its objects or activities are contrary to the public good, or B, that there is danger of the organization being used for purposes prejudicial to the public good. He may, if he thinks fit, by executive <coughs> instruments, declare that organization to be a prohibited organization. The president perhaps is being politically sensitive. He shouldn't be. No, wait. We are in this country. We he know what will happen. Eh? No, you let me finish. Okay, so, so let me finish. 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 Let me Let me finish. 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 Let me finish.
And it's maybe he prefers that route. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just like you see, we have a situation where the president has been given an injunction here that if you see this, may if he may, you may. That is a discretion. Yeah. So if the president elects to do other things, that's why I ask, what is the propriety? Hold on. Why do you ask political parties to go and have a meeting to control something you don't have a control over? When you have specific law, no. and the wording here says that if you see this and you think it will cause trouble, and it, look at the trouble but it's causing. don't Let me reach the point that they really don't have any control over that. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you, you are sidetracking me. Yeah. Okay. You, you are sidetracking okay, right, I'm sorry. You. Proceed, proceed. Go. Proceed. I proceed. And to that extent, when the president has done these things, where an organization is declared prohibited, no person shall summon a meeting of members they can't even meet. No person can attend or cause any person to attend any meeting. No person may publish any notice or advertisement to relating to any such meeting. No person can invite persons to support an organization and so many things. Basically, then you have a certain situation where even if you whisper anything concerning those things, the law takes you on. You can actually be arrested. That's where the tenuous control <coughs> comes in. So if political parties claim or the people claim or whatever it is, you say, hey, you are associated with something which is prohibited. Okay. Why I read the things I read in the beginning were to this point. If you take this and you read it together, what it means is that today the executive, the president can by executive order, pursuant to those constitutional provisions, say that there shall be no overt security operation anywhere in this country except by the Ghana police. And where so required they can bring in the army. And that will be law. And that will be law. But do you find, for example, <laughs> in America, in America, that, the that the president hardly resource, resort to executive orders yes. unless consensus it doesn't work. Which is what we have That's here. That's what I'm saying. So I'm coming. So do we have a crisis or not? That's the point. So I'm saying not yet. everything I'm saying, we don't have a crisis no, with vigilantes? No, no, no. no okay, no. I disagree, but let me just make my point. What I'm saying is that... We have a stitch in time. I'm coming. <laughs> when I make the point that what this requires is the president taking presidential executive action, mm -hmm. it is soundly based on law. And I make the point also that the president can, by the same executive instrument, say that any time you see any group of people involved in any kind of security operation, if they are wearing khaki or something that does not look like the police, immediately alert the police because they are the only people who have the authority so to do. The police then, is broken today. Yeah. Um, the police, so this to. is how you yeah. give them back the power they need. Because you saw the emasculation and said, we can't do anything about it. If you have a situation that says nobody, the national, there's nothing called national security. It's a secretariat. Yeah. So they cannot Agreed. mobilize the force to go and do anything in this country. And if they do, the police must arrest everybody that's why involved. I say you are taking us to the short commission. So, the realm so of that commission. me, I'm staying in my law and, and defending <laughs> my position that the solution to this is for the president to say, I have seen what is going on. And it's a present danger to this country. By virtue of these things, I have, under the law, given this executive order. Maybe the president that has the complexity. Nobody has the complexity of the beast we are dealing with. You mean the you... president cannot implement this clear law? Um, where is implementation? Why did they, they arise? He says they arise? an executive <laughs> instrument prohibits, list all of them, and I can add, describe what is prohibited and say all these, they are prohibited. If you attend After then what? After then what? After then, then the police and other security institutions have the force of law to arrest anybody. <laughs> Anybody, even attending a meeting, whatever it is, then you have grit. That is how you strengthen the police. And when they arrest them, they'll punish them under what law? Act 29. I can give you a plethora. Act 29, go to chapter 3. Criminal harm to the person. If they cause Presently, person, the police, they have the power to arrest and punish under the same Act 29. Exactly my point. They are not doing it. Why are you making that? subject to the president issuing an executive Because law. you have all these laws which are presently being broken, and the police should have arrested. They've given us an excuse that mm -hmm. these are politically empowered people and they have all these kinds of issues. So the president should come and take away that political energy. 
by this executive instrument to emphasize existing law mm. and say that I, the president, I am saying by this that if you see anybody, arrest them. If they so do he that, gives they have more the police force. council to deal with. Well, the no. police council that the police say. No. Thank you. Can we Can we hear no, 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 so no. many things? I have to yet to hear to make anybody the say effective. this right. is not a good enough okay. start mm. to the ultimate solution. Okay. But, but, but in a minute, I'm not hearing you say the proposals are a wrong approach including calling for a draft from the attorney general which will be not prejudicial to whatever outcomes let me make that my statement on that my statement is that all dialogue is good but that's the antelope analogy i gave you this is the proper beginning we should not put the focus rather on that other so let okay. them talk and everything, but this is the way to start it, and okay. then let them have their dialogue. Thank you. The, 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 thank you. Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Samson, yeah. um, politics. Where should go? <laughs> to start with. That's what we should start. To start with, I think that laws are being broken. People are committing <laughs> offenses <laughs> with impunity, <laughs> not because there are no existing laws to deal with such violations, but only because the system is broken. Now, you see, I think we have to face it, that the political parties we have, they, they are, their main focus is winning elections. So they essentially are election winning machines. And these groups, whether we like it or not, have become essential and an integral component of that machine called political parties. Look, during elections, 2016, we saw Mahama ladies. Does the NDC own any group called Mahama ladies? No. But this is a group that exists and operates and, and works within the party. Maybe financed by somebody. I am sure that there, I mean, there were groups, Youth for Nana. The NPP will not say exactly. we own these groups. But we know that there are party leaders who have in the past openly said that we have these groups, these groups, they exist and they do this and they do that for us. Look, the difficulty is that the president, the former president, and I believe former presidents, have been major beneficiaries of the activities of these people. John Buedu, the national organizer of the MPP, didn't yeah. shy away from exactly. that. Exactly. But he gave cogent reasons why they needed to rely on the services of these people. The limitations and he said of the police. He needed one. And he used it. And he, he doesn't, the police. He doesn't yes. make any apologies for that. Yes. Because you know that once you are in opposition, your security is compromised <laughs> and the and the and the police don't help you. Yeah, so something I'm making the point that look, the current president, the previous presidents, they've all been beneficiaries of the activities of these people within their parties. Mm. And it is not for nothing that you would have young people Go and drag a regional security coordinator. We all see yes. the videos, and nothing happens. From there, the people, people the are taking the, 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 the coordinator no, so, himself so, refuses yes, or fails to, to cooperate. To, to yes. assist the attorney general yes. to prosecute. The matter goes to court, mm. and we have these people storming the court, and we saw the eventual thing. We have people storming uh, Tamale Teaching Hospital to take away the CEO. And so on and so the forth. Minister and, uh, say in yes, the meeting. Minister Akutu so, say in the meeting. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, 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 and to be fair, these are not limited to this regime. No. And the mills and the Mahama, KVIPs and so on were being <laughs> seized. People working at tow boots were being dragged out. out of frustration and so on and I so am so not a policeman. Mm. You see? So the reality <laughs> is that yes. because in fact, the regional these... minister was sacked to satisfy this, this exactly. kind of groups exactly. in the NEC regime. And so to the extent that the players, the people who should act, are essential beneficiaries of these groups, I think that the president is constrained in what to do. We should because all force the president not to be constrained. This is the see, biggest security see, threat to the country. First of we all, shouldn't give that excuse. I, on this program the last time, said, ah, so the president is saying that there are these groups within my party. Because, yes, you can say that he's a president, and then there is the party. But, of course, the president is a product of the party. Mm -hmm. So the president says, yeah, I know there is the existence of these groups in my party. And these groups have become a threat to our democracy and the stability of the state. But I also know that same groups also exist within the biggest opposition party. Yes. But as president, 
Well, I'm helpless. You are not. Even though I have the police, I have the national security, I have the armed Did forces. Did you hear the IGP's uh, solution to this? He didn't say he's going to go and arrest them. He said all of us <laughs> must help the police. <laughs> And that we should think about even not voting for parties that sponsor them. That but you was see, the solution. Samson, the biggest <laughs> so, problem so is if also... So if the president is, is, is comes up, you know, is forward-looking and, you know, owns up, sort of, mm -hmm. and says, look, I want to be candid and blunt. Mm -hmm. We are the problem. Why should you blame the no, president so, for so that? No, so I'm saying that we need to acknowledge that the president, by that action, is saying, look, I'm helpless. I know the existence mm -hmm. of these groups, and I'm, I'm groping for whatever the solution would be. But the biggest problem <coughs> is the state of our police and how politicization of these security agencies yeah. have rendered these institutions helpless and inefficient. Look, just yesterday also, we saw the statement from the Ghana Police Service uh, about an MP obstructing you know, lawful duty of the police. And what is the... Threatening to yes, have them. Yes, threatening. They, they actually invite you. you know what? But rather the issue... And a statement of that sort. Of, uh, the late Awudu. Terrible. Yes. yes. Do you remember what he did? Mm -hmm. huh? He With arrested... Yes. yes. The, the sitting MP. Minister. Who, yes. He was there a former yes. minister. The original sitting minister. minister. Yes. minister. Yes. So we plead. Sometimes, some of our police the personnel... The police... You see, let them gather the courage. The police And, yes, and when the police says depressing. that we are cautioning you it's that depressing. you shouldn't... We are making this. a plea to the MP that that conduct, they will not sanction it any further. But I would have liked the MP in the think, police station... You think if Dr. Akwete... If the president was a signal... They will issue a statement to say that they are cautioning Dr. Akwete that next time when you see police officers doing their work... If the president gives a signal that he will stand with law so, enforcement, so, so, they will be empowered and feel confident to do these things. Mm. They tell no, us the president. president no, no, no. I, 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 I like it. There should be a signal of this. I said it several mm. times. But, but, but oh, I am saying that you want to act. The police will act. So so heads must roll. Heads must roll. And get the people who do the work. Strengthening of the law. Show that you will back law enforcement. How can the All of us have to support the president to take that stance. I know Kweku says, oh, the history of it is like that. This country. But we have to say something. The president knows something. That's why he's choosing the legislative part. Yes. Yes. If we so all support so the president the to take a stance of in favor of law enforcement, the he will be more involved in the police. Who and I who and who else will join The police must also, also watch it. They will turn it into a political football. The police may not be the best. And I think we need to say that because them. of how they treat its citizens. Because very clearly, as my panelists agree, if it were an ordinary member of this society, they would not have issued a press statement. Hmm. That person would have been in police cells now, yeah. pleading for bail, and they would not even grant not that. Not even an ordinary person. The right. NDC chair. Yes. Right. Didn't they invite yes. him? They and did. Hasn't they, so why, they why did. would they deal with that differently they from this? No, no, no. And, but don't go and, that far. And, and exactly, this same gentleman we are talking and, about and exactly, was also once upon There is also the, 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 the man of God, but, 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 but that was, that was when he was in opposition. Who was even in opposition? Who has gone on radio and say that he knows of um, people who have, who have conspired to kill the president, to kill the vice president, and he's not been invited, he's mm -hmm. not been arrested. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people ask these questions. If Ofosom Pofu says this in secret and he leaks, you arrest him. And then he, is it a Wusu Bempa, mm -hmm. does this publicly. Mm -hmm. And there is tapes about that. And you don't invite him. Even upon a petition by the party, He's not being no, questioned. And you see, my party. because and you see, there's a petition. Kofi Adams. Okay. Oh, and you see, right. the, All right. not, not to endorse. They are afraid not to of endorse. the consequence of calling him yes. in. Okay. Which is because they are afraid the politicians will strike against Maybe. them. Okay. So, 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 so let them call Maybe him in. But, but, but see what happens. But you see, the same somebody at the top of the show will give them a certain sense. No, who says not attack you? I also know that there is a conspiracy to kill another journalist. So that's why they're not going to say that. The so journalist doesn't actually say he knows. He also assumes the, the powers yes. of a prophet. Yes, and, and he says he can also foresee mm. that somebody will kill Manasseh. Yes, he is invited. He is invited. <laughs> okay. he not said, to endorse that action. action. Yeah. He said but, the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes. Yeah. But <laughs> the police are asking for the intelligence. Okay. I did reconcile. <laughs> 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 <laughs>